In an earlier video, I have explained the basics of dependency injection. It's time to get with a concrete example. So in this video, we're going to see how to do dependency injection with the different scopes in Blazor. So here's the end result of the thing that we're about to see in this video. Um, of course, dependency injection, you know, is not something that you can typically see from the outside, but um, here we have two of the same end result um, applications that we have here. And we're going to find out one of the things, um, how it can be that we have 15 here in this incognito window. And whenever I click here in this one, it starts with 16 and then we go to 18 and we go back to the other window. It starts at 18 and goes up to 21. How can that be? Let's see how to implement this and more. And here we are in Visual Studio 2019 on Windows, um, I have here a file new Blazor server project. So this is Blazor server, not Blazor web assembly. Now note that you can do everything I'm going to show you in this video. You can also do that with um, Blazor web assembly. So if you're not sure which is which, um, let me know in the comments and uh, I will make a video for you just explaining that one. But this one's all about dependency injection. So um, for Blazor server, it's it's kind of, you know, more interesting with the kind of scopes that I will go over um, and for Blazor um, WebAssembly that runs on the client. So, you know, the singleton might not be as useful, um, but for, for this case, it, it, it doesn't really matter. So let's just dive straight in. We have the program and the startup right here. Um, so this is a little difference that you will see in uh, WebAssembly. There you will not have the startup class depending on the options you um, select when creating the new WebAssembly um, application. Uh, but you know, in the program CS, you will see sort of the same thing where you can say services, but then it will say builder dot services. Um, and then you can say dot add singleton, um, or we have some other things as well. We have add transient. Um, so transient is um, that will give you a different instance for each request uh, for each session. So basically each time you reload a page or you go to a different page, um, you will get a new instance of the class that you're going to register here. Um, then you have add scoped, which is scoped to your current session. Um, so Blazor has this way and ASP.NET Core, this is by the way, very similar or exactly the same way that ASP.NET Core does it, um, will add a scope to your session. So it has a way to figure out if you are still the same user doing multiple requests. Um, and whenever you do during that session, you will each time get the same object back. So when you're maybe um, doing some things with your user profile, that will be scoped to your session, um, and you will get back the same instance each time. Now the add singleton is already in the line above at singleton, whoops, singleton, there we go, is one instance for you know the whole application. So it doesn't matter if it's a different session or a different request, uh, but the singleton will always return that same instance. Now, this is useful for, um, for instance, on the Blazor server application where, you know, this is actually hosted on the server, which returns you the same instance. But if you go the Blazor WebAssembly route, then, um, you know, you will have that running locally on the client. So it's a singleton on that client, but you know, that doesn't really have a purpose um, as the same singleton for um, other users of your web application. So beware of that one. Uh, but we're running in a server instance here. So let me actually just um, create a new class. So I'm going to right click on my project at um, new class. Here we go. And let's call this my singleton counter. So here we go at that one. Um, and this is just a regular class, I'm actually just going to add one property. So this is going to be public int um, my counter value uh, with a getter and a setter. Um, so of course, this can have methods, um, all the kinds of things. I'm just going to do this with a symbol uh, property, um, which is enough to demonstrate the thing that I want to show you. Uh, and we're going to add that singleton here. So let's add the singleton counter should show up in my IntelliSense. There we go. And like this, we've registered um, this um, thing as a singleton. Now, of course, you can also use interfaces, but um, you know, not everything has to be an interface. So um, whenever you have a need, create an interface for it else, you can also register concrete classes um, like this, this will instantiate, of course, you have overloads of the add singleton and add scoped and all the things where you can provide an action. Um, so let's have a look at one of these overloads where you can have 
um, this action, this function actually, that um, you know provides you with an implementation of the thing. Um, so here you can say, hey, I want to um, um, get this factory in, I think, and we're going to give the implementation back, but it can infer that. So um, here you can say new singleton um, counter like this as well. And it will just return that, which is useful in the case of where you maybe have um, parameters in your constructor or something that you need to provide, um, or you know maybe um, um, some other scenario. So that's the way you can do that. But in its simplest form, you can um, just do the singleton counter like this, and it will call the default constructor and create that instance for you. So now that we have that in place, let's um, also implement it somewhere. Um, so that's kind of interesting because you know now whenever you go to um, some kind Kind of C sharp code, you still have, of course, the dependency injection here. So if I do this in my startup, um, which is which is not going to work, this is not the greatest example. But if you have some other constructor of another object, um, you can here say, hey, I want this um, singleton counter, counter, and it will automatically inject that for you. It will go look in the um, dependency injection container first, see if it has an instance for you, and it will inject that in the constructor for you. Um, like I said, in the startup case, is not the best example because here it's not registered yet um, because that's actually happening in this class. Um, but for any other instance of code that you might have, it works. But the real interesting thing, of course, in Blazor is whenever you do it in Razor pages. So if we go to the pages and we're going to go to the counter um, Razor page, um, here we can say at the top, we can say inject, which is you know the way to inject the actual thing. Um, and here we're going to say um, our singleton counter, here we go. Um, so this is the type that you want to have injected. This can be the interface or the concrete class, just whatever you've registered, registered with in the um, dependency injection container. Um, and then we can say the um, uh, variable name that you want to reference it by. So now we have a my counter that will be injected automatically automatically, you don't need to do anything else besides just registering it in your startup class. So now we have this my counter and I can replace this here. The current count is my counter dot my counter value. That's the property. Again, this can be a method. This can be anything. Uh, we don't need this current count anymore. So let's just remove that. And in my increment count, I'm going to say also my counter dot counter value is plus plus. So now we did everything to use our singleton counter right here. So let's just start this application and see what it comes up with. Here we go. Here is our application. Let me zoom that in for you a little bit so you can see it just fine. We're going to go to this counter page and um, I can increment this. this. This just works. So it injected our singleton counter thing and it's now at five. So the interesting thing, because this is Blazor server, so I can copy this address and I can go to the incognito mode and I can put it in here. And you can see because it's a singleton, this has five too, because this is a singleton. It's true for all applications, all requests, all things. Um, so we both have five. And if I click here now, it doesn't update live, but um, you can see I put it here on nine. And whenever I um, continue this on the, the other instance, then it will go to 10, you see? So it, it shares this instance, it's all the same class. So this is what the singleton does. Um, again, only in Blazor server, um, because if you're going to do Blazor WebAssembly, then um, it's it's going to be locally, so that's not going to work. Now, let's quickly see the difference to round this off. Um, if we do the singleton counter, let's just keep the name. Um, but now we are going to register it as the add scoped. And we should see that this uh, behavior now changed and now we're going to have it per session so it shouldn't you know share that same value for both of these um, so we have the counter we're going to do one two three four five um, copy this address go into incognito mode go to the counter and you can see this is zero because this is a different session so i can do here and this is separate from each other so because they both have a different instance of that singleton counter class um, because we now registered it as um, a scoped one and of course you know if you do the transient one then this is going to be different per request which is not the greatest example to actually illustrate this so i'm going to skip that for now um, then of course the question is like hey when do you use which um, and i guess you know it depends um, 
based on my experience, you descoped is I think 90% of what you want to do because you probably want to use it for the users um, per session. Um, the singleton then and the transient one is for really throwaway objects, but the transient one, I find it um, not really something that I use often. So it's the scoped, usually the singleton sometimes, and that's basically all the things that you need to do. Do you have any scenarios where you use the transient? I'm curious to know, so let me know in the comments below. Um, what that is. And of course, if you want to know more about any of the stuff that I've shown here, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments too, and I'll be happy to answer them or maybe make a follow up video on that. Now you know how to apply dependency injection in Blazor. So that's cool. And um, if you've watched this video, then you automatically know how to do it in ASP.NET too, because you know, Blazor is just ASP.NET. So you now know how to do that too. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you've liked it, please click that like button so that it goes into the YouTube algorithm of happiness and other people can share the joy as well. Um, please, if you haven't already, if this is the first video you see from this channel, subscribe to my channel for more content. Let me know if you want to see more Blazor right now uh, at the time of recording, it's more examining that, that kind of stuff. But you know, I want to expand my horizon maybe to Blazor, ASP.NET, some Azure things. Let me know what you want to see down in the comments and um, subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified automatically of new content. And then I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.